So I had mentioned in the introduction to the Project Franken mill that I'm going to be putting DROs on the mill and as well as the lathe. And I've chosen an eye gauging product to do that. Now eye gauging has two different levels of product, if you will. They have a more entry level product, which is this unit here. Uh, these are considerably lower cost. They don't have nearly the features. Um, I don't recall what the accuracy is on these. The builds of the uh, slide unit and the, the housing are definitely of, of lower quality. And so I'm not wanting to use this product uh, in a machining type of instance. If I were using this on, let's say, a router table fence or, or a woodworking application, things along those lines, then this would probably be my, my first choice just from the lower cost perspective. But we're going to focus on what's referred to as their Absolute DRO Plus. And I have one of the units out here, and I think these are really targeted more towards towards machinists and the, the type of work and accuracy that a machinist needs. So they mention, uh, and you guys can, can read this stuff by yourself and look at their marketing material as well, but a couple of things that I really like are the, the absolute measurement systems. Uh, so once you set that zero, whether you turn it on or off, move it around, do whatever, when you turn it back on, it knows exactly where it's at. You don't have to reset zeros or things along those lines. Uh, this is built of a bit better quality from what I can tell. There is a lot more stainless steel on this unit. It's designed for to do a readout panel that's stacked like this, which is kind of cool. Um, I'm hoping or wish that they will do an RPM sensor because if we get an RPM sensor added to this stack, uh, then we'd have uh, really all the digital readouts that we'd need in uh, one convenient modular unit. So as is common on a lot of these units, they'll, they'll read in inches as well as metric. And then this also gives you the option of fractions if you're used to, to doing fractions. Although from the machining perspective, we're probably going to want to use the, the decimal readouts more than anything else. And then they show, we've got part numbers here and the measurement ranges anywhere from 6, 12, 24, 32, and 38 inches long. And what they're reading is, uh, which is to... Uh, uh, half a thousandth or to uh, 0.01 millimeters and then the accuracy over the range so over that measurement range of 0 to 6 inches this will be accurate to within one thousandth of an inch over that full range so that's pretty pretty darn good for what we need to do even if we go up to the 38 inch uh, we're looking at three thousandths of an inch over that full 38 inches so that's kind of sweet you can also hook this up to a, a computer if you wish. There is an output to switch it to USB. I don't know if, if we would be able to use this with CNC or not as a closed loop system. That would probably be mostly reliant on the CNC software. So I've opened up the box and these are the major components that uh, were in the box. The unit itself is wrapped in bubble wrap and then we have some small parts in a plastic bag. So inside the bubble wrap, um, we've got the unit assembled. So the uh, digital readout comes already cabled up. It's in its own little plastic bag. It has magnets on the back in case you want to attach it to a magnetic surface. And they also include this, this mounting arm and some couplers to allow you to, to kind of make a, a regular DRO readout out of this. The cable length is 72 inches on this, so a little bit over six feet. Um, on our mini machines, that's definitely going to be sufficient to allow us a lot of flexibility in routing. Just a single sheet of paper as to the setup and, and um, using setting the presets and the origins and things like that. Uh, just some details on what some of the parts are. Just the, the one side, not a lot of detail there. So inside the part kit, we have four batteries. These are CR2032 batteries. Um, we have a couple other options for mounting brackets. Uh, this screw is used to attach the plastic arm here to the, the base mount, if you want to use that option. And then this screw is used to attach the unit to the other end of the arm. And then we have a variety of small screws and washers. So these screws are uh, meant to assist along with this bracket to attach it to your machine. And then these brackets allow us to uh, either mount it surface like we have here or um, we can replace those 
and mount it at a right angle like so. You can cut the the indicator to length. You just probably want to use an abrasive saw or something along those lines to the stainless. Now looking at the bar itself, it does have uh, quite a nice finish. The back of the unit is, is all stainless. The front cover is plastic. On the back we have uh, five possible mounting holes that are threaded. And we have two small holes on one side of the unit opposite of the cable as well that could probably also be used for mounting. So the mounting bracket that comes with the unit is designed to use uh, these two holes by default. So dimensions, the width of the bar appears to be 0.7845 and our thickness is 0.155 roughly. I'm not going to give you exact measurements on the mounting brackets and their different configurations because there are several different ways we can mount them and it would be fairly simple for us as machinists to make a custom bracket as well if we need to. And the reading unit is uh, 1.5785 and our length on it is 2.953 uh, and then last our thickness is 0 0.632 and then the depth off of the bar is 0 0.111. So let's take a little bit closer look at the display unit itself. Um, we have the button to switch between millimeters, inch, fractions. Um, we can hold measurements. We can switch back to our presets, set our origin. Uh, a lot of different options there. And once we get one of these mounted on the machine, I'll demonstrate a lot of these in use. And then, of course, just the power button there. On the back, we have a battery cover. And we'll use uh, two of the batteries. So we've got two spares that come with it. And then on one end... Um, we have a flap that will, th this connection will go to our, our sensor and the measurement bar. There's also a connector there for using external power if you wish to. And then this other connector, which is quite a bit tighter, is designed for the computer connection. Uh, and they, they require a special little adapter box to adapt it to USB. It doesn't take USB straight off the unit. So we're going to slide in a couple of batteries so we can power it on. Like I said, there are magnets on the back. And there's an area where the included screw can drop in. And then we've got a thumb screw to tighten it down to another unit. Or we can use the thumb screw and there's a, a brass threaded socket. And we can attach it to the arm. So this is kind of nice. I've got one of the units attached to the, the swing arm if you want to use that mounting method. And then you can just daisy chain them together to where they become one unit as many axes as you want. Uh, on the lathe, you know, we'd start out with two axes. On the mill, we'd probably start with three. Uh, but if you've got a higher-end mill that has both, say, a knee and a quill adjustment, um, then you could even have four axes, four axes read out there. The only thing that, that I do hope they make, and, and I'll check their website, maybe they are making it now, uh, the thing that would make this complete is the ability to do a digital RPM readout as well. These units lock together fairly positively. They've got little uh, nubs at the top and then indentations on the bottom. So something that I just noticed, um, because I, I hadn't opened all these up and, and taken them all out of the boxes and inspected them closely, is it appears that um, the units that I purchased have different connectors for the, the sensor unit whether it's, uh, I believe these are both USB style connectors, but they're, I, I'm guessing they're still proprietary. One is, I believe, a, a mini and the other is a, a micro connector. I'm not positive. But I did buy these at the same time from the same uh, reseller. So I'm kind of surprised that I got different connectors there. I'm guessing they were in the process of doing a changeover from one to the other. So the reason that I went with this unit instead of the, the Sureline unit, so Sureline has the DROs that connect to the dials and to the lead screws themselves. The, the problem here is that those aren't going to account for backlash. So as you move things back and forth, they're not going to, to take into consideration the backlash. Now that's a fairly easy thing for you as a machinist to take into account and adjust for. Um, but the other reason I went with this is it was uh, a little bit lower cost. Now I don't get the speed readout, so that, that is a drawback. And then we'll look at other options for doing speed readouts and an RPM readout. Um, and then the other drawback of this is it is going to require some, some work 
on our part to figure out how to mount this to the different axes and, and possibly making some small adapters or brackets uh, out of, of scrap pieces of metal that we have. The, the biggest advantage though is this will immediately read no matter which direction I move it. So again, we don't have to worry about backlash. If I just nudge it to the right and then I'll try to nudge it back to the left as small as I can, you can see that the, the readings are, are precise and right there. The other advantage about this is no matter how fast you move this, it's going to be able to keep up. So it's not going to lose where it's at. In case you're doing CNC and, and rapid relocation movements, some scales you have to move at a slower speed. Although most modern scales, that slower speed is uh, still plenty to, to cover what we'd be doing on, um, on machines of this size. So that, that probably isn't a concern with newer, newer scales and readouts. So I just wanted to give you kind of an introduction and, and a box opening and see what all the contents are. I will do uh, other videos later, like I said, on how to specifically mount these to each individual axis. And I'll be starting with the X and Y axis on my mill. Uh, and I still have to figure out how I'm going to do that. I've got a few ideas, but uh, nothing certain yet. I hope you've enjoyed this, and be sure to give it a thumbs up if you like it. If you want to see anything uh, additional about the units, just tell me in the comments, and, and I'll try to respond or get you the details on those. And as always, to see our future videos, be sure and subscribe.